Okay, well, welcome everybody once again this Sunday. I'm so glad to see you all here, and it's a huge privilege that we can be together here to praise our God. First of all, I want to greet you all and those who are living stream, live stream again. Uh, thank you for joining us today and watching from home. You remember that you're always welcome to be with us, and also if you have the chance one day to come and visit, it will be very nice that you can be here with us. We also want to bring up some announcements. Today we're going to do it a little bit different. Instead of doing it at the end, we're going to bring up the different things that we're going to have during the coming weeks. Some of these are, just a moment, I just want to be very accurate. The first one, we have Grace 360 Men's Fellowship. Breakfast, Saturday, June the 18th at 8 a.m. at IHOP. So all men, welcome to come and have some breakfast. So if you want to do a big meal, just remember not to eat the, day, the night before. So it's going to be June the 18th at 8 a.m. in IHOP. I believe it's the one in Sanford by 1792. So you all men are welcome to come. The second announcement will be we have a family fan at the Fort Mellon Park uh, this Friday, June the 3rd. Yes, it's going to be from 530 in the afternoon until 7 in the evening. So you can all come together, even though that you don't, may not have children as the age as we have with the Bex and my family. You can all come. You can also bring your bathing suits. It doesn't matter if we are in 90s or 80s. We can all go in. It's going to be an amazing time. <laughs> it's okay. Just if you want to. I'm not going to say anything if you're doing it. So it's going to be a nice time where you're welcome to come and join us. And then we also have the Grace 360 Ladies Meet at Colonia Restaurant. I'm not sure if that's at the Colonia Mall downtown. Oh, okay. It's uh, for breakfast at 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, June the 7th. So also, ladies, be prepared. Schedule your calendars and everything that you need. It's going to be June the 7th, 9.30 a.m. on Tuesday. Well, uh, part of all of these announcements, we also want to share a little bit of what Mike is bringing today uh, to share with us about the scripture. This is at the uh, Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verses 1 through 15. Let me pick up my Bible. All right, this is how it reads. Chapter 3, number 1 says, There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark on evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Verse number eight says, um, the wind blows whatever it wants. Just as you can't hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, "You are a respected Jewish teacher, and you, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we'll tell you what we know and what and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony." But if you don't believe me and I, I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned. But the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake in a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of the Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Well, very extensive, but at least also very deep. We want to pray about this and may and ask the Lord that he may give us guidance as well for Mike to uh, take us more into depth of what this um, portion of the scripture means. Thank you, God and Father, for this time that we have this Sunday in where we uh, reunite once again after a long week and 
bring our minds into a set of worship, worshiping your name, Lord. We also want to remember, Lord, as you are uh, our God and Father, that you also gave us a freedom that we don't deserve in this country, having this weekend of memorial where we remember those who have fallen in this land for having given us the chance to be free in this, in this beautiful country. But as they did, Lord, having a purpose in their mind of fighting for what, for it, what it was worth, you did more when you went to the cross, Lord. And that we are free because you went to the cross and gave everything away, even though that we didn't deserve it. Now help us to re bring this into our minds, Lord, while we rejoice in hearing your word and how you express all the good things that you've done. We praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Robert. So I want to highlight once again that our missionary of the month is Santi and Steffi Del Rey. They are associates with Ethnos 360, and we are happy to say that they now have an online account that you can give to them through. Or if you'd like, you can also give to them in the back in the offering. There's envelopes. You can write a designated gift for them as well. And right now they're praying for the need that they have of about a thousand seven hundred and I think eighty dollars for this immigration fee that came as a surprise. So I believe they're around seventeen to twenty percent of their goal. So if you could be praying with them and helping as Ken with that, that would be wonderful. And also be praying for them as they start this partnership development as they begin serving here locally. We also want to um, be praying for our community. And in that, we're also taking up donations for the Pregnancy Center. And so in two weeks, June 7th, whoever would like to, we're going to go over to the center and bring the donations and just pray for their ministry and maybe learn a little bit more about them. And if you want to give specifically to the Pregnancy Center, you can also do that with envelopes in the back. So we just thank you all for being a part and just pray for the Pregnancy Center and what God's doing there. It's, uh, it's good to um, see life and, and young people and children and uh, to see a little bit about what they're learning and um, growing as well as children in their relationship with God. Just like you and I are learning to love and live and appreciate God's word. So will our children and our young people. They model their lives after us. They pattern after you and I. Whether we realize it or not, they're copying us, they're observing us. And uh, so let's be the ones who mark the pathway for them. Uh, there's a lot of tough things going on in our society today. And uh, if we have a difficult time standing firm, our children are definitely going to waver. Uh, if we know where we stand, we understand what God thinks, uh, what his opinion is, and we align our thoughts and our opinion with him, uh, we'll, we'll transmit that on. We'll pass that on to our children. They'll, they'll, they'll pick up on it. When something makes you angry, you'll find that down the road, they start getting angry at the same things. <laughs> if uh, something makes you laugh, they'll find that, that those kinds of things are funny as well. And this is something that we are have an area of responsibility in. So as review uh, from last week, this message today is a continuation of last week's message. I did not get through it, but that's okay. I, um, I'm going to sec a sec second part of this, and it is titled, A Fully Devoted Follower is Holistic. And I clarified last time that uh, we're not talking about uh, how we eat necessarily holistic foods or holistic medicines, although it's not necessarily exclusive, but we're not talking about transcendental meditation, etc. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to God's Word, and God's Word uh, teaches us about Himself, and then we use English terms, because that's generally what we speak here, maybe some Spanish too, or whatever other country you've been a part of, uh, we use words to communicate and understand. As God gives us understanding, uh, hopefully these words then become useful to us to communicate. Uh, 
yeah, I, I go to holistic church. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's that? Well, I'm not, I'm not calling Grace 360 a holistic church, but as we understand um, this aspect of holism from a biblical perspective, I think you'll be able to say, oh yeah, our church and I myself, I pursue holistic ministry. Our church is engaged in Sanford, Florida, or the people that we are partnered with that are in different parts of the country or the world are engaged in holistic ministry. That's what I'd like to be able to say as a church. That's where that's the direction I want to be able to go. I want from my life to uh, to be a ministry, a holistic ministry come out of my hands, my 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 eyes, my my body, that I demonstrate the the uh, character and heartbeat of God through me, through my physical body. I want to have holistic ministry. I believe Jesus Christ had a holistic ministry. So that's I, that should assure you that we're not talking about anything strange when I use words like this for our church and in our messages. As we study the word, I believe Jesus Christ had holistic ministry. As he reflected the heart of his Father in all aspects of life, so we today reflect the heart of Jesus Christ and how he ministered, we reflect that in how, how we live out our life and conduct our ministries. So we pursue this as followers of Jesus Christ, as his image bearers. I mentioned this last week. Let me just do a quick review. Uh, we talked about how the condition of our country is not what it should be. We looked at statistics, and we said, wow, how could 70% of our country, our nation, claim to be Christians, followers of this Jesus Christ, who we profess as our Savior and our Lord, and yet the condition of a 70% Christian country is demonstrating some very not-Christian conduct. And, and philosophies, uh, very wicked conduct, in fact. And so I don't want to get back into the statistics from last week. You can uh, view that online on our YouTube channel to, to be reminded of what were some of those realities. But we just take that and say, okay, if, if my life isn't matching my identity in Jesus Christ, something isn't right. And I have to ask, what's going on? I have to. If my life is not completely holistically reflecting the life of Jesus Christ, what's missing? What's, what's going on? And so in our pursuit of knowing Christ, of being and becoming his fully devoted follower, we have to ask the tough questions and obviously find the answers in the Word of God and then make the appropriate changes that are necessary when uh, confronted with those issues. That takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. Um, I, as I ref mentioned last week, appreciate each and every one of you. You, you and I wouldn't be here on a Sunday afternoon worshiping God if we weren't serious about this. Uh, if the Holy Spirit didn't draw us to uh, fellowship and worship Him together and to, to get to know Him a little bit more. This is just a small window of time in a, in a, in a week. And so the, my assumption is that throughout the week as well, we are engaged in pursuing Christ and knowing Him. If, if uh, you're struggling with that, I, I'm more than happy to walk you through some just practical steps on, on walking with God throughout the week. That's, um, that's, that's what I'm here for. If you, if you need any kind of counsel in that area, it's just really practical stuff that we can be doing to, to be pursuing Christ in every aspect from our waking to our, our, our going to sleep. 
why can't even we glorify God while we're sleeping? Uh, I don't need to get into that topic real profound, but uh, I believe we can indeed glorify God in our sleep as God intended us to rest at certain times of the day. <clears throat> so as we pursue this, I believe God has drawn us here on purpose, that we really are serious people. Yes. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't take my afternoon on Sunday. I, I could be somewhere else, really. In fact, we're in Florida. The beaches are really close by. Uh, there's a lot of good restaurants downtown. There's a lot of good things. Uh, there's a nice hammock, maybe, uh, calling my name that I could be doing. But we, we, we are pursuing Christ because we want to. And, and based on that, I think, I think uh, our, in our pursuit, you're, you're, you're engaged with what I'm talking about, that as we, as we allow our, our thoughts and our challenges, our, our minds to be challenged, and our spirits to be challenged, that, that you're willing to grow. You're willing to mature in Christ Jesus, in your relationship with him. I'm going, uh, assuming uh, on that, go, basing this message and these, uh, these uh, Bible teaching that I'm conducting over the next few months, based on that assumption that truly God is calling us. And so therefore, I'm going to point us in the right direction, I believe, as I study the word of God. Uh, I believe that that the word of God is indeed understandable, and it is useful to us. It is it is there to edify us. So part of this is to engage in a holistic and transformational ministry. That's what I want to see in my life, and and I believe through our church and our fellowship. Betty, let's go into the next screen. Uh, let's look at the word holism. Okay, so where did this word come from? All it, all it means, it's really simple. All it means is whole. Like instead of a half a pie or a quarter of a pie or a slice of pie, you get the whole thing, right? Um, oftentimes a wife will want all of her husband's attention. She'll talk with him, and he'll, he'll go, mm-hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Sometimes he's on his cell phone, or maybe the TV's on, mm-hmm. What, what does she want from him? She wants a holistic relationship there. Give it, honey, <laughs> look me in the eye when I'm talking to you. I'm trying to get a point across. Uh, what I'm talking about is really important, about the curtains and what color they are. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's in, it, all it means is the whole, right? And, and uh, this was derived from a Greek word. So our, our English language takes a Greek word called halos, and it borrows it. Uh, like we didn't have enough words in English, we decided to make a, par, borrow from Greek and then Englishize it and then come up with holism holistic all right and the idea and the concept is that it covers an entirety um, and where we are going with this and that is in a biblical sense is when we talk about when when god created us in his image he created us with a, a body obvious right he created adam with a body he created him with from the dust of the ground it says and then it says he breathed into Adam the breath of life. Uh, he, Adam became a living creature as he was created. This, this invisible aspect of Adam was created in the image of God. But what's that invisible aspect called? It's his spirit, his soul, his mind that corresponds with the, the physical attributes of his brain. So when, when your brain's going on, your, your mind is on, and your body is connected with your spirit and your soul, your emotions, the center of your emotions, we call it in English our heart. In Spanish, it's the same way, nuestro corazón, and, and it's the center of our emotions. Uh, I grew up in a country that is bilingual, and in the, the people of that nation, 
uh, in the other language that they speak called Guarani, it's not in the heart, this physical, uh, we call this the heart, and also it's a blood pumping vessel. They say it's in our stomach, but it's not in just any part of our stomach. It's in our, the depths of our bowels, okay? That sounds crude in English. I'm not going to say, oh, my dearest love, and you pull out this dozen roses to, and, and you get down on your knees and you're going to propose to this beautiful woman and say, dearest love from the depths of my bowels, I love you, will you marry me? No, that's not romantic whatsoever. But in Guarani it is. Woo-wee, that turned the ladies on. Wow. But in... In English, we say that the, the, uh, our heart, our, our, the center of our emotions, our soul, it's this aspect, this invisible attribute of man that was created in the image of God, that if you and I are not aware of or in tune to or have a concept of, our, we become a very materialistic people. And this is where I'm going to hit on pretty hard as we go through this next, uh, these next few slides, that we unknowingly, and I'm, I, I believe this is not intentional, but we are influenced by our society, a society that is naturalistic, a society that is the entire structure of our American and, and Western culture is materialistic. And I'm not saying we all want stuff. There's some people who don't want stuff. They, they, they like minimalism. Have you ever heard of that? You know, some people will actually sell their house and everything they have and live out of a van and drive around. That's cool, right? Minimalist. Yeah. Can, can we do that? Uh, yeah, that might be a little hard. You know, how, how am I going to get rid of all my stuff? I like my stuff, you know. But minimalism. So can a minimalist also be materialist? Absolutely. Absolutely. Materialism is where our bodies are in charge. Our minds are in charge. Our, our secular mindset is in charge. Our naturalistic mindset. And I'm let me give me time, and I'll explain this as we go along through the different slides. So our pursuit, our goal as Christians, as people who are we believe strongly and and with strong conviction that the Bible is true, and that we were, as God said about Adam, created in His image. And that he gave us an opportunity be, to be recreated, to be rebirthed, to be reborn in order to uh, 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 be able to reflect the purposes and the image from which we were created. So we were created imago Dei. I've been talking about that for the past few weeks. Created in his image to reflect him. We are are to pursue our lives coram deo. Okay? Now, some of these are buzzwords, but they, they help me because it's like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to capture an idea, and then when I hear coram deo, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, coram deo. And then it's cool. And I'm like, hey, yeah, guys, I'm walking. I'm coram, coram deo. What does that mean? Coram deo means before the face of God. I live my life on a daily basis before the face of God. God is watching me. He's observing me. He knows me. He's omniscient. He's, um, he's omnipresent. He can, he's everywhere present. Wherever I am, he's already been there. He's, he's been there forever. I can't even go somewhere where he's not. I live my life coram deo. What, what is often limited in our own mindsets is our own mind. We don't take into account God and his infinity how infinite he is, and that we, whether we are aware of it or not, we do live out our lives before his very own eyes. Therefore, I'm sorry, guys, there is no such thing as doing something in secret. I've tried it. I've tried it. I've tried to do things in secret that nobody knows about. And I'm not going to tell you. Uh, don't look at me like that. I'm not going to tell you what I, I've done in secret. That's a secret. But I found out that it's really not a secret because in the whole time, God... God was observing. He, he sees me. He is the all-seeing God, all-knowing God. He's, in, he's, 
his qualities are such that that it's impossible for 8 billion or whatever amount of people we are on the planet that we can hide from him. We live our lives coram deo before the face of God. And these are aspects of holism, of, of living our lives uh, uh, in the flesh, in, with, in our bodies. Man, you know, uh, no one's denying our bodies. That's, that's who we are. I, I'm sorry, but I cannot change my physique for the life of me. I could try to go to some doctors to get a bunch of uh, plastic surgery, but probably not recommendable. And even when they're done, what am I going to look like, you know? Uh, am I really going to improve my looks? Anyway, well, that's just me, right? Uh, ladies, you can do whatever you want to. But, um, but I'm, I'm, my, our bodies, yes, we attend to them, but, but we are holistic. We are, we are body, soul, spirit. We have a mind. We have emotions. This is how God made us. And we are to embrace it because this knowledge and walking in the light of this holistic knowledge it affects our working out of our Christian life in a very practical way. If we do not live out our lives on a daily basis with a holistic mindset, we become dichotomized. We begin separating things. This is what I do uh, in my fun time. This is my work time. This is my worship time. This is my me time. Have you heard that? Yeah. You know, you make sure you have your me time. Uh, um, this is my family time with the kids. This is my game time, right? Uh, you know, we like playing games. Uh, this is, and and we become very dichotomized, very fragmented in our lifestyle. Let's let us pursue holism. Holism is where every area of our lives affect the other, and we do not remove our in Christness our identity in Him from any area, every area, 100%. Our play, our fun, our me time is for the glory and honor of God. That's where we want to go with this, that our entire, our whole life, our whole day is Christ. And it's for His maximum glory. It's why last week we talked about in, uh, in Philippians that we are to work out these invisible qualities of, of, of being created in Christ Jesus, being, or we are created in His image, yes, fallen in Adam, but recreated in Jesus Christ, born again, and now we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. If you recall last week, uh, we used the word kate, kategazomai, right? It was a fancy um, Greek word. That's the working out. It's, it's taking the invisible qualities and attributes of man made in God's image and recreated in Christ Jesus to make visible God's qualities. It's to take the invisible and make it visible to work it out. Let's look at John chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. The, the whole section is an interesting section, but we're just going to focus on how, here's the main point I want to bring across uh, of this passage. The main point is that you and I, thousands, yeah, 2,000, 2,000 years after this took place and was recorded, we're struggling with the same things that the people back then struggled with. Same, it's identical. The very same thing that Nicodemus was wrestling with, we wrestle with today. And that is trying to wrap our minds around this holistic concept that we are, we are spiritual people. We are physical people, and together we are whole. And guess, guess who Nicodemus was? He was a religious leader. I can't say Christian because uh, um, Nicodemus was in a religious system. Now, I believe Nicodemus later on, as he, as he had a, uh, uh, these times with Jesus talking, could, did become a follower of him. But uh, he was part of the Ju 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 uh, Judaish, Ju Jewish, yeah, that's better, Jewish religious system of the day. 
This was a guy who was a, a, a leader, a spiritual leader of the people. Out of all the people that should be understanding body, soul, spirit, mind, it should be this guy. He was the leader. If the leader is not understanding, how do you think the followers are, are, are handling these issues? I bet, I, bet, I bet they're not getting it either. If your leader, that's, that's your, uh, the guy who, or people who are showing you uh, the way you know, and trying to give you understanding, is really wrestling with this, um, you might want to find another leader, another guide. Uh, Jesus talked about, can the blind really lead the blind? It's not a good idea. And here we had the same situation with Nicodemus back in the day. He's trying to lead people in their thinking, but he himself isn't wrapping his mind around it. He's not completely comprehending. And so the context of this is he's going to Jesus and, and he's asking him, what's, what's up? What's going on? Now, we know, here he says in verse, verse 3, we know who you are. We know, we know you're pretty amazing. It says here, now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher and come from God. So no doubt in my mind, you're a teacher. You came from God. And how do we know that? We know it by these signs. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. Jesus answered him, pointing him right to the, to the core issues here. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, Unless one is born again, and, and, and this concept of born again, it, it, uh, it comes with the idea of <clears throat> to, to procreate. So when a man, and we don't need to go into detail, but when a man and a woman uh, uh, sleep together, they procreate. The, the natural consequence is the birth, the conception of a child, and being birthed, and, and, and you have a child that is born as a result of that, that wonderful act. Okay, so the, the concept of born again in a physical sense is a baby's going to show up nine months later to procreate or to, to beget. You may have heard that word. Or to, to conceive. So the concept here is Jesus is talking to Nicodemus is it is necessary it is necessary for man and woman to be reconceived to be rebirthed recreated only this time in God's image in the image of Jesus Christ we see that in Ephesians uh, for all things have become new in Christ Jesus uh, all creation, uh, we have been created in Christ Jesus. We're a new creation. And so it's that concept of, of new birth, new life in us. Yes, we're, we're, we're still uh, the, the same old physical body. And that's what Nicodemus wrestled with. He's like, he started to get, all, he's a little confused. Like, I don't know if he was being sarcastic or, or if he was just legitimately asking a question. But it goes like this. Uh, after Jesus said, you must be born again, uh, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? How, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, and born of water would be uh, in the mother's womb, when, when a physical body is uh, um, uh, in, in a mother's womb, he's captured in, in um, water. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the womb, and the baby's in, in there developing and growing. Uh, so we're, one must be born of water, and the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God uh, unless, he, unless he's born of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born is of the flesh. Of the flesh is, the, is, is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The, the wind blows where it wishes, and, 
and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So he's using wind as an example, illustrating that 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 you we we can't see the wind. These are spiritual matters. These are invisible issues that we're talking about, Nicodemus. You're a smart guy. You can get this. This is not that hard of a concept. We are created spiritual people. We are holistic. We are body and spirit. This is very important for us to understand today, especially because we live today in a secularistic, naturalistic society. And that philosophy rubs off on us, whether we like it or not, just like in the time of Lot um, in, in Sodom, when he lived there, was his soul was vexed, it said, by those around him, ours is, as well. Whether we like it or not, you turn on the TV, and I'm sorry, you're influenced. When I turn on my TV, when I click on Facebook uh, news feed, I'm, I'm influenced. Yeah. I can decipher whether that article is accurate or not, or I can decipher whether the news is true or it's fake news. You know, I can, I can use wisdom, but whether I like it or not, I'm influenced. And sometimes we walk away from TV ticked at different things. Turns out we didn't have the whole story, um, et cetera. Betty, let's go to the next slide. So I'm gonna I'm gonna in the in the minutes that we have here today I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna walk us quickly through uh, some deep principles that if at, at another opportunity we have time to go through in greater depth it would be a blessing to you as it has been in my own life. So one of the things that we cannot get away from and that is worldview. Our worldview affects everything that we do. So therefore, our goal as part of followers of Jesus Christ is that our worldview reflect the mind of God. We want his perspective on everything. So worldview really does matter. And here I've just thrown up three really general worldviews on the screen behind me. You see Judeo-Christian worldview, deism worldview, and secularism uh, worldview. There are many other worldviews. I just want to bring up these three. That's it. Otherwise, we would be here forever for a very long time. So in the Judeo-Christian worldview, this is the worldview that you and I are pursuing, one that is biblical, that is derived from the whole counsel of Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, properly uh, interpreted in the light of, of Scripture and in the light of God's goal and, and, world, and God's desire to communicate who He is. So in this Judeo-Christian worldview, God is transcendent okay and he is also imminent what that means transcendent i know it's a big word but basically it means that god is over all of creation he is separate from his creation he is not a creation created being he is the creator and therefore separate from his creation he is independent his life as a life-giving source, is independent from the earth and all things that have been created. He is therefore transcendent over all. Yet, in his transcendency, he is imminent. Imminent means he is actively and proactively involved in every aspect of our material lives. That is a really cool thing, and that's where we want to go with this, so that every aspect of our lives we understand. We walk away today from here knowing and having the confidence, when I get behind the wheel of my car, my motorcycle, the walk that I take, wherever I go, my bicycle, I am coram Deo. I am before the face of God at that very moment. Oh, shoot, that means... Uh... My driving style might need to change a little bit. Um, road rage. Oh, man, I can't participate in that like I used to <laughs> or would like to. Uh, my driving is affected. My, my When I go to work on Monday, my business life is affected in a profound way. Coram Dale. When I pull out the paper and pen and I sign checks, for the glory of God, before the face of God. That means honesty and integrity are a part of everything that I do. 
I don't try to find ways of finagling money out of people. I pursue God's glory, and I pursue this aspect of, of loving, uh, loving others as, uh, as myself. Wow, how do I take that into business? I thought business was a dog-eat-dog world. Um, yes, it can be. But can I be a puppy in the dog-eat-dog -dog world? I don't know. I just came up with that. But the idea is that God in every aspect of his transcendency is imminent within our, our everyday lives. Deism, let's move on to deism, was introduced in the 17th and 18th century when, when intellectuals began uh, questioning everything and rationalism came into effect. We don't have to go into a lot of detail and all these different aspects, but it was this period called the period of enlightenment. And so man's knowledge became of greater authority than God's knowledge. So God's word was put in a lesser, uh, lesser category. Why? Because it was spiritual. The material things became more important, provable science. If you can't prove it to me, Within, from a test tube, it's not true. And until you can, it, it, I'm not going to accept it as truth. Therefore, miracles don't even exist. It's all in your mind. Uh, some of these inexplicable phenomena, maybe it's aliens from outer space, UFOs or something. There has to be an explanation, but it certainly isn't God. It certainly isn't spiritual. And so deism separated uh, God from from. Uh, from the creation. It, it still left the existence of God in that period, but he was not imminent. He was no longer involved in our everyday life. He removed himself. He, it's uh, like a clock. You, you set it, you start it, and it just goes. God created the world, and now whatever happens, happens. It's left to us to figure out everyday life. Deism. From deism came out this mentality of dualism. Uh, God far out there, religious things out there, and, and, and uh, spiritual things are something uh, private and a private matter. This led into what we call secularism, naturalism for today, where basically there is no God. There, God is neither transcendent nor imminent. And this secularism is the dominant worldview of today. Wherever you go, you stop at any gas station, any store, any, you go downtown, you walk along and you stop someone and talk with them. You, you go down and have a coffee with someone downtown. I'm not saying everyone. I'm saying it's prevalent. It's a prevalent worldview, secularism, where uh, this world evolved out of, out, of, um, out of natural processes and there is no God. And if there was, he certainly does not care about us. Okay. So if you and I want to have holistic ministry, if you and I want to be effective ministers of the gospel as part of this fellowship and as we pursue uh, God using us in a tremendous way at an individual level in this community and society, be very aware that, that uh, secularism is the dominant worldview and that basically stay out of my private life. What, if you want to pray, pray in private. Don't it prayer and, and all that kind of stuff is not in school. It's not in it's not in um, uh, sports. It's not in business. It's not in government. In fact, it's, it shouldn't be anywhere in the public in, in, at all. Just leave it out. Uh, we're better off without it. So secularism is prevalent. Let's continue on uh, with the influence of secularism, Betty. Uh, this this secularistic mindset has influenced us to a tremendous level, whether we like it or not. And it's called, we call this influence, this separation of God and, and uh, that which is material, uh, the, a, a Christian or evangelical Gnosticism. Uh, this idea of uh, Gnosticism is it was, it was prevalent in the time of the Apostle Paul, and he dealt with it on a regular basis. In all his different letters, he would deal with Gnosticism. And it was the idea that the body is one thing, the spirit is another. Uh, what, basically, what you do in the flesh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, 
I can essentially do whatever my body wants, but I can still go to church and sing hallelujah, um, thy will be done. I can still pray. I can still go to church. I can still do things, religious activity. I can even have personal devotions, but that's separate from my body. My body, I, I can do whatever I want to. And, um, and so a lot of these this Gnosticism idea still is prevalent today where it, it comes from the Greek, um, the Greek philosophers, Plato and all that, uh, those guys, Socrates from that time frame. But it had these two dualistic premises that spirit and body, they're two completely separate categories. And in our, in our Christendom today, we have also been influenced by, I go to church and I have my religious life, but then in my secular life, I can do whatever I want to. There's, there's no relationship. It's called the secular and the sacred divide. Betty, let's continue on with this uh, Greek dichotomy that we have been influenced by. So you see that, that as a result of these worldviews, there are things to us that are higher that are more important to us. Uh, grace is more important than nature. The spiritual is more important than the physical. The sacred more important than the secular. Faith is more important than, than reason. Theology more than science. Ethics more than government, business, and economy. Uh, missions is definitely way more important than politics. Wouldn't you agree with me? <laughs> okay. Uh, you see where I'm going with this. Uh, we would typically nod our head, yes, of course missions is important. God's heart beats with the mission of getting his gospel out there. But is is cannot we politics be the platform for missions? By golly, there's a lot of people that are influenced through politics, and that can be the, the, the platform for communicating the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our devotional life is more important than art and music. The gospel is, is certainly uh, sacred, whereas our physical ministry, the things that we do, the, the houses we build or the, the lawns that we mow and, the, and the, the gardens that we hoe and clean, the, the plants that we take care of around our house, that's of lesser value and importance. So uh, we will often glorify these Christian ministries more than we uh, uh, embrace business, for example, or people working in politics. And, and this is where we're trying to go. As we, as we look at holistic ministry, we want to see God preeminent in every area of our lives, every area. And my time is going away. And I have a lot more slides. But let me, let me pull this down to a, a final slide here. Let's go one more, Betty, a couple more. And where it says holistic, let's keep going to where it says holistic. Wow. There we go. Thank you. Our goal is to be holistic, where, where God and the spiritual and natural world in our relationship with him are one and the same. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 to 24 said, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, not partially, but completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who calls you faithful. He will surely do it. We want him to be preeminent over everything. Where uh, this authority of Jesus Christ is, is permeating every aspect of who I am. Every aspect. Even when I go take a shower. Be glorified, Lord. Take authority over my private, invisible qualities, invisible aspects that no one else sees. May that be for your honor and glory. Jesus Christ is preeminent of everything in Colossians 1.15. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things. In Him all things hold together. 
and he is the head of the body, the church. He is your head. He's in charge of you. He's your authority. He's my authority. That's what the Bible says. Whether I believe it or not, this is what the Bible says is true. It's a reality. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything, everything, he might be preeminent. He, he be Lord of all. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his, of his cross. May, the, may this, this authority and salvation and recreation that Jesus we have in Jesus Christ through the death and burial and resurrection on the cross be evidenced in our lives as we give him every aspect, our entire being, our bodies. Give God your body. I know it aches. I, 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 I get... I get I, get, I sit at the computer and I try to hammer out these messages and make these cool PowerPoints to communicate uh, uh, God's Word. And man, I get these backaches and I think, oh, man, this is no fun. I have to get up and walk around. I bet some of you guys have some similar stuff. Maybe even you're like, Mike, a backache? You're complaining about a backache? You should hear some of what I mean. You should hear about my liver, man. You know, my, my, my spleen and my... Uh, I, I don't even have a gallbladder anymore. I mean, you think you've got problems? You're only 45-ish. Jeepers. But give this old corrupted body to God for His glory. Give it all. The whole thing. The, your whole body. Yeah, yeah, the eyeballs too. Yes, the sinuses too. You give everything. Give your brain to the Lord so that He can be preeminent, that He can, His transcendency takes control of your life so that He is glorified as you were created in His image and then recreated, reborn in Christ Jesus. Putting away Adam, our, our, our identity in Him, and embracing our identity in Christ. May it permeate everything that we do so that our growth and our pleasure that we have in Christ Jesus will be this invisible stuff that happens inside of us, this inexplicable peace, inexplicable joy that's impossible to like put into words, be made manifest in how we drive, be made manifest in how we greet our neighbor that just kind of gave us a cold shoulder, be made manifest at the guy that just threw cigarettes and, and, and garbage down on the street. Well, what did you do that for? May all of this peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts so that we can, we can manifest these invisible qualities of God in our everyday life. Let's pray. Father, thank you that your word is true. You are a God who created us holy, not halfway, partially. You created us holy. And you knew that we needed a Savior because we were born in sin. You knew that we needed to be made whole again and to be renewed and recreated and rebirthed, reconceived in Christ Jesus so that you can make your life known through us, that your life can be made visible. Father, I don't know where each individual is at in their walk with you. I don't know, and I never will know exactly but you do. And I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will convict anyone who is struggling with a sinful lifestyle or with repetitive habitual sin to just cast themselves on you and say, Lord, woe is me. I, 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 need, I need this birth. I need this recreation. Create in me a new heart, Lord. Renew in me a new mind. Refresh me. Revive me in the Holy Spirit. May I walk out of this place not ignoring these issues in my life, but let me give my whole being to you, my body, my mind, my spirit, my soul, my emotions, my mental state and my mental capacity, my anxiety. I give everything to you, Father. 
that you will be honored and glorified in and through me. Thank you, Father, and I pray this in your name. Amen.